COVID-19 tests are common, but early detection has its issues. Srikanth Singhamanini, professor of mechanical engineering and material science at Washington University in St. Louis, says standard tests are not able to detect diseases with high sensitivity at the early stage of disease progression. We came up with a nanoparticle that is exceptionally bright compared to the nanoparticles that are being used today in those tests. Singamanini's lab is focused on substantially improving tests for a wide range of viral and bacterial infections, as well as other diseases. In some cases, we need a urine sample. In some cases, it can be a swab sample or can be a finger prick. The color of the line. His research team set out to develop a new point of care diagnostic test for clinicians. And the research shows this test is 1,000 times more sensitive than conventional rapid tests. The hope is for the technology to cheaply and rapidly test for a range of diseases without the delay and expense of sending samples to a lab. Our hypothesis is that with plasmonic floors, the new nanoparticles that we have developed, we can actually create a test that is exceptionally sensitive and can be used in wide variety of diseases or pathological conditions. In a standard test, proteins and bodily fluids can be captured by labeled antibodies on the yellow pad. But unlike the standard test, the labels in the Singamanini lab are plasmonic flora. These are ultra bright fluorescent nano labels that are a thousand times more sensitive with clear results that show a visual color in 20 minutes. It was put to the test when COVID was at its peak. The particle that we have amplifies the fluorescence by as much as like 10,000 times, significantly increase the sensitivity of the test. The ultra-bright particles can be imaged with a simple handheld device to quantify the amount of protein present. It can tell doctors if a patient needs close monitoring. can actually perform this in the doctor's office. Now you're not just asking the question of whether or not it is present, but you're asking the question of what is the concentration to be able to make a clinical decision based on that concentration. Doctors would have answers in 20 minutes instead of sending a test to a lab and waiting. The team is working towards having one test strip to test for more than one disease. These are proteins that could be indicative of how your body is responding, what's making you sick, not just what's in your body. Or they could be proteins that are shed by, by viruses or, or bacteria themselves. For example, one test for COVID, flu, and strep throat. Strategically choosing the right uh, set of analytes and packing them onto one strip, I think that's the way to go. It would be great if you can actually tell what specific strain of the bacteria is getting detected on this test to choose the right antibiotic to treat these diseases. Currently in the lab, PhD students are applying the technology to bacteria for the first time. In this case, gonorrhea testing. When the sexually transmitted disease goes untreated, gonorrhea can cause serious and permanent health problems. This would offer early detection. For example, even there is only one single bacteria, we can still detect it testing at a low cost. For like three or four bucks. The gold standard is PCR-based assays, which takes a lot of time. $60 for one test. In many of the developing countries, there is a very strong need for rapid tests and inexpensive tests that can be deployed in the point of care or in the resource-limited settings. Beyond infectious diseases, the plans are to advance the technology for a variety of conditions. For example, kidney diseases for people to check routinely some of the protein biomarkers or small molecules and metabolites associated with kidney diseases. So there's a better way of actually tracking the disease. Another big one is detection of TBIs, traumatic brain injuries. For example, in the battlefield, can you actually deploy a simple test after the blast? Say, for example, you want to quickly monitor the protein biomarkers and be able to tell whether there is a, a brain injury that occurred. Another application would be to use the advancement in sports medicine to test athletes with head injuries. Being able to measure those sensitively in the field at the right time can make a big difference. Singha Manini says the technology can possibly prevent the next pandemic. When you actually are able to test more rapidly, you can contain the infections and hopefully you can keep it uh, to uh, the smallest possible geographical area and then prevent from spreading. He says commercialization is likely within the next two years.